Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Earth Day at Oak Grove School. What a crowd. What a crowd. How lovely to see all of you here on our beautiful campus on this great Earth Day. My name is Willem Zwart. I'm the head of school here. And we're very proud to have on our campus Dr. Vandana Shiva and Rick R uh, Ridgway uh, here with us today. And both have a connection to Oak Grove School. It so happens that all three of Rick's children attended Oak Grove School through eighth grade. And Vandana Shiva's son attended one of our five sister schools in India, Rishi Valley School, as, which is a school our seniors get to visit every year as part of their senior trip to India. Now, Oak Grove School and our sister schools in India are deeply committed to environmental sustainability, as many of you, I'm sure, know. Our commitment to environmentalism comes out of an emphasis on one's personal relationship with nature, which is at the core of our educational approach here at Oak Grove. So it made perfect sense when Camilla Beckett approached us to explore the possibility of having Vandana Shiva speak on our campus. We were thrilled when it turned out that we were able to make this work on Earth Day. And here we are. Thank you to Carol Castanon for introducing us and to Jim and Camilla Beckett who are making a documentary called The Seeds of Vandana Shiva. And if you would like to find out more about this film, you can go to the table right over there, uh, which is also where you can find Vandana Shiva's latest book and where she will sign books after this event. We also want to thank, I also want to thank Andy Gilman, um, who is working with Camilla to make this happen, but also to make Earth Day happen. So Andy, an applause. Thank you, Andy. All right, here uh, to introduce Vandana Shiva is Rick Ridgway. Uh, he has been committed to conservation and sustainability throughout a long career as a mountaineer, as a writer, and as a businessman. He is Patagonia's VP of Environmental Affairs, where he oversees numerous environmental and sustainability initiatives. He also co-founded the Sustainable Apparel Coalition. In addition to business, Rick is celebrated as a mountaineer and adventurer, making the first American ascent of K2. He has produced and directed several documentary films, written dozens of magazine articles and six books, National Geographic honored him with its Lifetime Achievement in Adventure Awards. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all from me. Thank you for coming out to Oak Grove on this beautiful Earth Day. And here is Rick Ridgway. <laughs> coming down that step, I was... Uh, I recalled a cartoon I saw in the newspaper years ago <coughs> where there was somebody elector elect uh, and, and another person off to the side <coughs> saying, uh, and now ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the man who's conquered Kilimanjaro and Everest and off to the side you see somebody falling over backwards as they're trying to get on the stage. <coughs> I <coughs> know that most of, many if not most of you are familiar with our company, Patagonia. <coughs> down in Ventura. <coughs> and also that our company is really in business to be a tool for both environmental protection and, and social justice. Today is of course the day for that. And it's no surprise, since that's our company's commitment, that for many, many years uh, we's all, we've also been close friends with Vandana Shiva. Uh, going back 20 years or, or so, uh, neither of us were sure exactly when she first came uh, to visit our company, but we are sure about her message and 
the alignment with her message and, and our corporate goals. <coughs> as, a, as a scientist with a, a big heart, she's over, the, over her career dedicated her life, as she'll be telling us, I know, in a few minutes, <coughs> to provide both environmental protection and social justice to smallhold farmers, to using agriculture uh, as it should be used for both those goals. <coughs> and her work is as needed now as it's ever been. <coughs> Even last week, we received word that Kim China, one of the large multinationals in the chemical seed business, is attempting a merger with Syngenta, the huge Swiss-based ba uh, agro giant, when already 75% of all the chemical seed industry in the world is concentrated into just six multinationals. It's about to be concentrated even further. Now, when you have to face things like this with that much concentrated power, it can be depressing. Uh, a friend of mine, David Quammen, who some of you may have read, said, however, that the trouble with despair as a response is that not only is it useless, but it's also not very much fun. <laughs> we had a chance to cross paths again with Vandana just recently, even less than a year ago, last June, at a conference in Costa Rica <coughs> that was exploring a new development in smallhold agriculture called regenerative farming and, and grazing. <coughs> now, I was there because our company, as some of you may know, is in the middle of a small brand extension uh, into food. So in addition to making clothes, for many of you, we're beginning to make food products as well. We have a few fruit and energy bars to start with. We have several <coughs> varieties of dried soup mixes for backpackers and campers. We have a salmon product and a bison jerky product. <coughs> and all the grains in the soups and the bars come from farms that are using these regenerative practices. Our bison and the jerky product comes from a ranch in South Dakota uh, that is also using the same practices. And, it, and we'll hear more of this from Vandana in a minute, but know that for us, we're expanding into food because we understand that in food is where the real, the largest impacts of our human activity on the planet reside, and we also know that in agriculture resides <coughs> our best hope. <coughs> and the real reason that at Patagonia, we're much less pessimistic than we've ever been. And we're actually getting quite optimistic looking forward. <coughs> because regenerative farming and grazing only begins with organic practices. It only begins with the elimination of pesticides and, and insecticides. And then on top of that, it adds the protocols <coughs> Of using, uh, of using compost, of rotating crops, <coughs> of using cover crops, so that over time, the soils increase in health. They increase <coughs> exponentially in the amount of organic matter that gets brought into the soils as they regain health. And as that happens, two big things happen. First, those soils begin to retain moisture so that even in times of drought, farms and ranches following these protocols <coughs> need less water. They need less irrigation. But the other amazing thing that happens is that as the soil builds organic matter, which of course is built of carbon, the soils begin to pull carbon right out of the air. 
and sequester it into the ground. <coughs> and there have been enough farms and enough ranches <coughs> using these protocols for a long enough time <coughs> that scientists have begun to measure the amount of carbon being pulled into the soil. We've done it ourselves on the ranch where we're getting the bison for our bison jerky product. <coughs> Those measurements have shown us that against ranches using traditional grazing practices, this ranch is pulling into the ground <coughs> four tons per acre more carbon than the surrounding ranches. The amount of carbon being pulled into the ground by the farms has been measured. <coughs> now, extrapolating those measurements, sometimes uh, scientists have extrapolated that if just 17% of the world's farm and grazing lands converted to these protocols, <coughs> that would be enough to pull all the anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions produced on planet Earth per year back into the ground. <laughs> if all the grazing lands in the world, 3.5 billion hectares, converted to these protocols, <coughs> Projections are that that would get us back to pre-industrial levels of atmospheric carbon. Now, our dream of Patagonia is to introduce these practices into cotton and wool in addition to our food products so that when you buy a t-shirt from us, <coughs> you would be buying a solution, a partial solution, a tiny little solution to climate change. So instead of making that t-shirt <coughs> causing less harm, the t-shirt would cause more good. Now, that is, for us, a reason to be optimistic, a reason for all of us to celebrate looking forward on this special day. <laughs> the other great thing about these protocols is that they're simple. They're the opposite of industrial agriculture. <laughs> industrial agriculture isn't needed. It doesn't really even have a place in this system, much to the chagrin of the multinationals. And we're going to hear more about that, I know, from our colleague and friend, Vandana Shiva. So on this special day now, please join me in welcoming her to our special place, Ojai. Thank you. <laughs>